Welcome everyone. We have a new drawing today. I'm excited about snake with some bubbles. So I'm going to put my drawing as I always do in a box. This is an old fashioned way of starting a drawing. And there's a couple of reasons why we do this. <clears throat> You don't have to worry about it because the box is already created for you when you divide your paper into four quadrants. I always start with the box as I was instructed to start with the box because it helps you with your composition. By composition, we mean where do you place shapes and things within the picture plane? Are you gonna put your tree up here or down over here? Uh, that is a compositional choice. Does a river go through here, or is it gonna go up here? Are you gonna have a blotch of red color here and green down here? These are all compositional choices. If you draw the box first, it helps your mind to sort of organize the arrangement of objects, colors, and shapes within the picture plane. Really, you can't get away from the box. The paper is a box or a rectangle. A canvas is a box or a rectangle. So starting right out and drawing a box helps your mind to recognize that we're gonna work within these boundaries. So that's why I always draw a box and I recommend you do the same. And again, with your 3D drawings, you've already done that. I always think it's a really good idea to put a date. So today is the 15th of September, which is a special date for me. It is the 100th birthday of my mom. She passed away in 2015. She was 94 years old, a remarkable woman. She made life look easy and she had 10 children. Uh, 100 descendants. So marriage, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, uh, the matriarch of a remarkable legacy. Her and my mom, my mom and dad were just amazing people. Just a great life. Anyway, my tribute to my mom and dad. So let's draw with our snake, or let's start our snake. So I am going to put this start the snake here so this is going to be its mouth and it's sort of I'll give you some eyes here generally speaking you want to avoid detail early on in a drawing it's always better to go from the general to the specific. There's a general rule. So here, this is gonna curve around like this. And you wanna try to keep the thickness of the snake's body the same as best you can. Of course, it's going to get thicker towards the center. And this part is relatively simple. And then this is going to wrap around and it'll come out this end. don't really need to erase very often in drawing. A lot of times what will happen is those mistakes get absorbed into the drawing. So it's not such a big deal, especially when you're drawing in ink. You can't really always erase, but it doesn't matter. So just keep drawing. I've seen students tear up their 
paper and just throw it away and they've made some little minor error. So I'm putting this pattern on the snake and notice I'm making these curved. I'll draw this really faintly. If I were to draw them straight, it's gonna look awkward. So as I'm looking straight on, the, the coils are kind of curving this way. As I look away, or look more towards this end, they sort of go in a different direction. If you keep them all in the same direction, it'll still work. So just make sure you curve, and this will emphasize the roundness of the snake's body. So curving it here, and now I'm kind of going in the other way there. And it just depends on your perspective, how you're looking at it. I've seen snakes with this pattern. So now I want to color these bands. So I'm going to go every other one. And I'm just going to lightly use a little cross hatching. I think this is the fastest way to put values down. better to do this in order because you want every other one to be colored. Cross-hatching could also be curved if I wanted it to be, but I don't need to do that. I don't think it's going to make a difference, but if you would like to, you certainly may. Okay, so now we've got this pattern on this snake. Now I want to put some form shadows. And I'm again going to use cross hatching, but you can experiment with your squiggly lines. So because of the pattern of this, the, where the light's coming from, it looks like it's coming this way. It's here, now it's going to kind of switch sides. So just be mindful of that. I hope you're becoming more aware of reflective light. We don't pay attention to it very often, but it is there. Here it's going to be a little bit darker because really we've got a, a hole in the center.
a student once who said, I can't draw a snake, I'm deathly afraid of snakes. To which I said, well, thank you for the compliment, but this is not a snake. This is just a drawing. In fact, I understand if you have a phobia of something, one of the therapies is to draw it. Like if you're afraid of spiders, draw a spider. Or if you can't even do that, at least look at a picture of a spider. Because it's just a photograph. Okay. I want to emphasize this line because it's kind of a little bit of a cast shadow. So I'm making this line darker. shadow here. Remember the cast shadows usually have a hard edge. This one's going to kind of wrap around. And here the cast shadow. If you go outside the box it's okay. Don't let the box ever stop you. There we have our snake. Let's darken this mouth. It'll give it a sense of depth. Depending on what you're drawing with, you can use your finger to smudge it and soften that form shadow. They have blending pencils that you can, they're just a cardboard pencil. They'll smear it for you. So there's our snake looking ready to strike, but in this case, the snake is going to strike a balloon. I'm trying to draw a perfect circle. If you want to use a stencil, this is overlapping, so I'm drawing it much lighter here than here. If you would like to use a stencil to make perfect circles, you certainly may. I think it's better to just practice your circle. There's a little reflection usually. There's one that popped, boom, pop. So this snake is in for a big surprise. Things that are wet usually have a reflective surface so we put a little reflective. Here's one that's smaller. Okay, so my circle, I could fix that a little bit. This one's not too bad. <laughs> we can put a horizon line, um, but I think we'll let it go for right now. And there's our drawing. Snake with some bubbles. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day, and we will see you soon. Bye-bye.